Hello, hello, hello. This is Dana Neal with The Real Reality Radio Show with Dana Neal. I'm excited to be with you on today. Let me tell you why. Because we're back with the radio show. We've been gone for a few months, kind of like a hiatus, and uh, just trying to pull some things together for what we want to bring to you for the real reality show. If you know me, if you've Googled me, if you've heard me before, you know that there are times where I need to tell you the real deal. And I want to be real with you on today. So let's go. It's time to get started. We're getting ready for takeoff. Can you hear that? We're in the plane. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's Real Reality Radio Show with Dana Neal. Ha ha ha. We're excited. Very excited. Let me share with you something on today. Uh, Just right now, let me share with you. When you listen to The Real Reality Show, there are some things that you're going to find that are going to hurt your feelings. They're going to uh, get you upset. They're going to get you in connection with the Lord and what he has because I am a faith-based person. I do not let go of that at all. Do not let go of that at all. I also know for a fact that some of these reality shows are funny. If you have been following my YouTube channel, I have a playlist, and it's the Real Reality Show with Dana Neal, where you actually get to look at me in my life and see what's going on and why things are going the way that they're going. And um, who I am as a business person or business woman. I want to encourage you not to take so many things personal when it comes down to the real reality show. I don't have any disclaimers. This is Dana Neal. This is how it comes out. This is the way that it goes. This is how it works. But the one thing I need you to understand is that if you find yourself in this, please don't get personal. Don't take it too personal. Don't get upset. Don't get so pissed off where, you know what, you don't get the lesson in what's being given. What I want you to do is just take a look at yourself and just say, you know what, there's something I can learn from this. Or maybe I can share this with someone else. Because when you come to the real reality show, it's as real as it gets. Okay? God bless you. I'm glad that you're here. Um, We're just going to take care of a little um, shopping not shopping, but uh, housekeeping, what we call housekeeping. And uh, I want you to take a listen to the Bad Billionaires Club because they are the sponsor of The Real Reality Show. Bad Billionaires Club, it is the club for you. We offer more in networking, understanding, building, encouraging, and taking you further in what God has planned for you than any other networking group around the nation. Blessed, anointed, and destined. It's not about numbers. It is about what God called you to do. It's not about clicks. It's about what God called you to do. It's not about money. It's about what God called you to do. You are blessed and anointed and destined. Blessed, anointed, and destined. Billionaires Club. Bad. That's who we are. Go over to the website, badbillionaires.com. Register today. Subscribe today. Look at what we have going on for the rest of the year. We have the Millionaires Breakfast, as well as the Denim and Diamonds Women's Business Conference. Are you going to be ready for the Millionaires Retreat? You'll never know until you're a bad billionaire. God bless, because you are bad. Aren't we excited already about the Bad Billionaires Club? That's awesome. Bad Billionaires Club. Only $14 a month. I'm sorry, it's $14.95 a month. And they are the sponsors of The Real Reality Show with Dana Neal. Please go over to the website, www.badbillionaires.com and uh, join the club. Be part of some of the things that they're doing. Get discounts. Get free ebooks. Grow your business. Figure out what you need to do in life. Bad Billionaires Club is for you. 
So, what's up next? Here on The Real Reality Show with Dana Neal today, we're talking about what's really going on. And I want to touch on some things that are happening around the world. I want to touch on some things that are happening just in your backyards. Either way, I want to touch on some things that are really pertinent, really pertinent to our lives. And um, one of those things is who we are, okay? And the, the reality of who we are is you can sit back and you can say what you want to say on social media, which everyone says that all the time, or you can sit back and you can be a public success and a private failure. You, people say that all the time. You can sit back and not do anything and still be accountable for everything that you haven't done. So, first off, when I'm going to talk about who you are, you have to realize that your past kind of overlaps with your present, which it does, and into your future, which it does. But you'll notice, um, if you've ever heard me say anything, if you've read any of my blogs or any of my book, books, you'll also know that I always talk about we should not dwell so much in the past okay now some people are saying well how are you gonna tell anybody your testimony if you don't share your past sharing your past and dwelling in your past are two different things i'm working on a project right now called prophetic patterns and um this project is allowing me to help others okay this project is allowing me to learn from what I've been trying to get someone to teach me for years about the prophetic uh, call or anointing that's on my life. My understanding of the prophetic is that God shows you something or the enemy tries to throw you off in that same instance. But God is showing you the future, the present, what needs to be done, when you need to fast, when you need to pray more. And um, this project I'm working on, I'm calling it a project because it, it, I don't know if it's going to be a book. I don't know if it's going to be a sermon. I don't know if it's going to be a, a, a conference. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I'm working on it. And the bits and pieces that God allows me to, to release, I'm releasing. But what I'm saying to you right now in regards to the prophetic patterns and who you are is just that. I always tell people that everything is spiritual. No matter what you do, when you get up in the morning, it's spiritual. When you go to bed at night, it's spiritual. When you walk out the door, it's spiritual. When you drive your vehicle or get on the bus, it's spiritual. When you're walking down the street, it's spiritual. Why? Because you're running into different entities. You're running into different people that are full of different spirits. You're running into different circumstances and situations that are good or bad. All of it is designated or, or, or implemented by some kind of spiritual occurrence. A pattern and um, when you consider and you can go look this up what pattern actually means you know that some things are going to overlap when you were a child you did this as a child you went to elementary school then you went to junior high or you went to high school and then you went on to college maybe you went to college you went to a university or you went to a trade school that was a, a, a uh, pattern of things that you had to do that was a, a start to a get to a finish a a cause that went to a solution or a result um you were born and then eventually you'll die in the middle of that there are things that are going on who are you in the middle of that is very important to the persons the people places and things around you okay tomorrow i'm going to an event uh, entitled his life saved my life a wonderful woman of god who's written a couple of books and um the his life saved my life theme is basically how her husband stayed with her in in some different circumstances of their life you'll have to get the book in order to get the full revelation of that but either way i'm going to be at this event tomorrow and why because i am a vendor so i will be um sharing some of my coach dana things and cds and whatnot either way why i mentioned this in in this part of who you are is i'm actually selling a sample cd of some music i've done and it's only two songs i'm actually singing on and three songs are some beats i created i had to do this myself i had to create the cds i had to uh, create the beats and the two songs were um the music was produced by my brother and i wrote the words 
okay? This is who I am. I come from a family of entertainers. We sing, we dance, we make music. We encourage others in making music. We know what to do, we know how to do it. But sometimes and somewhere in our lives, some kind of pattern was broken up. And some kind of pattern was broken up in me. Where I should be right now as far as singing should be a lot further than, than where I am, okay? So when you think about or what I'm saying to you as far as real reality and who you are, realize some of the things that you knew how to do as a child or as a teenager or a young adult that you no longer do. And I don't mean if you were a drug dealer, you don't sell drugs, you're not working for somebody, you have a full-time job or whatever. That's well and fine. But if you, you know what, if we could pick apart the bad parts of that, of selling drugs, you knew math. And you knew weights and scales, which is also math and science, okay? So you have to you have to say, there's some things I knew, even though I did something illegally. You can piggyback off of that. How can I make that work for me? This event that's happening tomorrow is a testimony of what they went through the first 10 or so years of their relationship, okay? The husband is now coming to speak to us and give his side of being a motivation to the men. Hallelujah. I just got a revelation on that. A motivation to the men that are husbands in any kind of aspect of their lives. Who they were has created who they are now. Those things overlapped. It was a bad situation that turned into a good result. And then they, what was the solution? God was the bonding agent in that, and He was the solution. Um, what is the solution for me as far as my CD and why I'm providing the CD? God, He brought me back to a point of Dana finding your voice, and there's my voice, the Dana voice, not the um, the voice of the stellar award winners, not the people that you pay all that money to go hear or see at, at, at your church or church events or any of that. It's the Dana voice. And that's fine with me. I'm fine with the Dana voice because I want to worship God. It's a worship CD. I didn't say that. Either way, what I'm sharing with you is who are you? That's the first step of realizing in real reality who you are. You cannot allow people to just shut you down. And make you feel like there's there's no uh, <laughs> you can't allow people to shut you down and make you feel like there's no more you. You follow what I'm saying? There's no more you because you can go work for anybody and still have remnants of you. Wow, I need to write that down. Remnants of you. Wow, that's gonna be part of prophetic patterns. Remnants. Hmm. But who are you? Who are you? You know? If you're listening in and, and you're on your um, computer or whatnot, type it in the chat book, in the, in the chat box. If, you, if you're if you on Facebook and you're listening on Facebook, inbox me. Let me, know what, let me know what you think, what you're thinking right now. You know? Who are you? Are you ready to be more than what people say you are? I know you are. I've seen you. I've seen you before. I know some of the people listening right now. Mm -hmm. Wow, that voice though, I tell you. It's funny how it's just going away. <clears throat> Either way. Um, so the next, we, we talked about who you are. So the next thing in the real reality, what's really going on. Um, and this ties in to who you are. Is basically uh, the things going on around the world. Okay, Let, let's let's go with, with what we can't handle. ISIS. Let's go with what we might be afraid of. Ebola. Let's go with how our kids are dying. The um, enteran, enteran virus. Okay? Forgive me if my pronunciation of that one is not correct. But those are three things going on around the world that are hurting all of us. ISIS is hurting us not because they're going against Christians over there, but because Israel is God's right hand, pretty much. Okay, that those those are his those we come under them. Okay, ISIS is over there causing havoc on God's number one children. 
And what we're saying is we're worried about ISIS coming on U.S. soil, but no one is worried about the fact that what God will do because of ISIS and what they're doing. The end result that's going to happen to them. No one's praying. We're all complaining, pointing fingers, asking what are we going to do. But then while we're saying what are we going to do, we don't want President Obama to do anything because he can't do anything for us. I really want you all to think about that. And this kind of goes along with who you are. When you consider who you are, where you've been, what has formed you to be who you are right now, why are you so against some man who hasn't thought twice about you? He's got a job to do. Oh, wait. Let's go back to ISIS. We're either going to help or we're going to turn a blind eye. Ebola. Ebola is killing some people, ladies and gentlemen. Now I have my own thoughts on that, which comes down to being faith-based. And some people are probably saying, come on, be real. We have to do something. They have to find a cure. Let me tell you something. They have a cure. I have a cure. I lean on the Lord. I know what he's going to do for me. I know what he's going to keep me from. Because his Bible, his word says that he's going to keep me from having no sicknesses. And anyone around me. Why? Because I am a servant. A full-time servant. Not a part-time servant. So all of you part-time servants talk about having wisdom and not going here and there. What does the word say? Because if God told you to get to Africa to lay hands on the Ebola patients and you don't do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's just let's just do this. Let's just go through this one more time. Who are you? What's really going on? What's really going on? The real reality is the fact that it, it, there's some of you, and you know what? I'm gonna do my best not to quote any scriptures because I want you all to pick the Bible up and look at look at it for yourselves. But what's really going on? You're either gonna be real or you're not. You're either going to look different. And when I say look different than the rest of the world saints, than you, than you look right now, it's not about your outward appearance. It is about how you handle these situations. Stop saying, God gives me wisdom to not be in those particular places. If the Lord told me today to go to the club and hand out scripture or hand out my card for being a, my ministry and leave, I'm going to have to do it. Because that's what you call being obedient. When you get to the point and you decide that no, I I, I don't want to I don't want to put myself in those situations. You know what? Talk to Hosea. Okay, talk to Esther. Talk to uh, Daniel and his friends. Talk talk to Peter. Matter of fact, why don't, you, why don't you step out a little bit? Talk to Moses. Talk to Noah. Who had to build a ship and get out in the hurricane. That's that's what that's why he built the ark. Because of a hurricane. Come on now. You saints. When God tells you to do something, you're gonna have to do it. You're going to have to do it. I listened to a radio show this morning and they gave some examples of um, if you had a choice of going to Africa to help with the Ebola situation or go to ISIS and fight. They said, go or, or go and help and, 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 and conquer ISIS. They said, I'm going to jail because I'm not going to either. And I thought, I can understand the, the lead guy because he doesn't go to church. As bad as he talk about church, he doesn't go to church. So I knew he wasn't going. Some I could see him going to jail, 
But some of the other people who talk about the Lord so much and they know they go to church on Sunday and they, they have this, this little bit of faith on the inside of them, they don't have that mustard seed size faith. It must be smaller than that. Because they don't have the faith to say, you know what, if God covers me, he covers me 100% whether I'm in ISIS or whether I'm in Africa. And I'm saying ISIS, whether I'm in Israel fighting ISIS. You follow what I'm saying? Somewhere down the line, we have to stop acting like we don't know what's really going on. Who are we? Who are we? Who are you? Let me give you a taste of what's on my sample CD while we go to this commercial break. there so I hope you you were able to hear that but I think that was a little awesome for my second or third creation don't you think <laughs> so again um you know, we're talking about what's really going on. We talked about who we are, ISIS and Ebola. Um, and briefly, let me let me reach out to you about the intern, intern virus that's affecting children. Now, I have a problem with this virus because, you know, this virus got pushed to the back burner when Ebola hit the, hit the scene. I'm just going to say it like that. And my problem is that y'all didn't have a problem with this killing kids. But you have a problem with something coming over from another country where there's more people be, being killed from this virus in another country than you do about something that would kill your child. My son, who has a, a minor health issue, and when I say minor, it should be really, he should be able to do nothing. But he does. He can play in band. He can blow a flute. Um, he plays sports. All of that. All, he shouldn't be able to do any of those things. He's living with one full lung and one half lung. Okay? He shouldn't be able to do anything. When they said something about this virus, my first thought was, Lord, I know you'll protect my son. I know. I declared and decreed over my son when they t said something about this virus because it, helped, it affects your breathing. It affects your lungs. It, it affects your respiratory. Okay? Then he came home one day and didn't feel well. And it didn't, it didn't, I say it didn't go away within the next day or two. So I was not calling any doctors. I'm still praying and I'm still giving him either essential oils or some kind of medicine that we have here, which is just maybe some Vicks Rape Rub and or some peppermint oil or whatever. I'm, that's what I'm doing. Okay. And it's gone. It was just a cold. It's gone. But I did say to him, you know, there's this virus out there that could affect you more so than it affects somebody else because you don't have your full dual lung capacity. Now, he wasn't scared. He wasn't nervous. He was probably feeling like I was. You know, we just going to pray and we know the Lord going to handle it. 
And he did. It was a minor cold. It's over and done with. And he's on with his life. The problem I have is that every saint out there has a problem with all those things that are going on and have their the, the, the voice to complain, but not the voice to pray or fast. Now, if me and my house can do that for you and yours, how come you and yours can't do that for me and mine, the one down the street, the one around the corner, the people with Ebola, the children that are dying from this or being hospitalized from this? Because there's a lot more going on. Hey, we're talking about what's really going on. There's a lot more going on than we want to agree with. Think about it. Why don't we want to say there's a lot more going on? Why? That brings me to my third and final part. And we only have a few minutes left of the show anyway. That brings me to my third and final part of this segment of The Real Reality Show with Dana Neal. We don't want to put the monkey on the government's back because we know they're watching us via the internet. We know they're listening to all of our phone calls no matter what we try to do. And they're probably watching TV through you through that, that beautiful flat screen plasma TV that you have hanging up in the living room. Okay? They have an answer. But they're not going to give you the answer. Why? Because a good 90% of those people in government, and I'll, I'll give it this. Thank you, Lord. I'll give it this. 80% of those people in government are going to be part of the new one world order that they don't want you to know about, that they don't want you to be afraid of, that they want to basically coerce you into in the next few months. Again, I said I'm not going to give you any scriptures, but you know what? Look it up. If you are a reading and an understanding person, look it up. You know, go to Revelation. Go to First and Second Thessalonians. Go to First and Second Timothy. Read on it. You want a foundation of what to read on? Read Matthew and 24. Because what's really going on is somebody has the answers. They do. And what you need to say instead of complaining about it is, Lord, reveal the enemy. Because there is one. There is. I'm Dana Neal, and you have been listening to The Real Reality Radio Show with Dana Neal. I am glad we're back. We'll be back next week at the same time, 12 noon Central Standard Time, which is uh, 10 o'clock on the West Coast and 11 o'clock on the East Coast. I really, I'm sorry, 1 o'clock on the East Coast. I really am thankful that we've been here together, that we were able to share, and that, um, you know what, if you have any questions, send them to me. You can either send them to info at ckqllc.biz, or you can send it to info at coachdana.biz. I'm here for you. I'm here to help. And it, the real reality is the truth. This is what's really going on. The Real Reality Show with Dana Neal, no hose barred. <laughs> it, it's not professionally or politically correct, but it is a sharing of understanding. And I want you to know that you are the answer if it only takes you, okay? And like the word says, you only need a mustard seed size faith. Just don't let it be less than mustard seed, okay? <laughs> I want to encourage you, encourage you to go over to YouTube. My YouTube channel is Mrs. Events and subscribe to my playlist, which is the Real Reality Show with Dana Neal. Um, videos will start posting within the next week. Um, I'm thankful to all of you, all of you, because you are my, being my listeners, you are the ones that help me to see me, help me to grow, and help me to go and do what is necessary Um to get the word out. And um, it's been 10 months on the 20th that I've been away from the 9 to 5. And as I grow, I want to help others. So just, you know what? Check me out. Google me, Dana Neal. God bless you. We'll talk again soon. And we're going to land because we've been in the air all this time.
God bless you. I'm Dana Neal. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you next week with The Real Reality Show, The Real Reality Radio Show with Dana Neal.